I've spent the past decade at Cambridge Medical School learning how to be a doctor and a researcher in habits and addictive behaviours. And so I've learned a few things about neuroscience, psychology and what it takes to have a good attention span every single day for years on end. Everybody is complaining about how their attention span is messed up these days, but nobody tells us about what an attention span even is, let alone how to fix it. And so I'm going to explain what an attention span is the science of how to fix it and some no BS advice that you can do today to start making progress on your goals and start focusing on what you want to focus on instead of what this tells you to focus on. So what is an attention span? People normally say it as how long it takes for them to lose focus on the task they wanted to do. And then they tell themselves that they can't focus and then they get into a rut and then they live a life that they hate. But in your brain, you are always focusing on something. Like if you're distracted from your work and then you start doing another task, guess what? You're focusing on the other task. So really it's not about how you can't focus on anything. It's actually about how you relate to all of the competing motivations that you have for doing different tasks. So let's say you got task A, right? Is what you want to do. Then there's task B like going shopping or task C like petting your cat. Your attention span is all about how quickly you switch between tasks and switching away from the task that you wanted to do. So let's call this a bad attention span. So you attended on doing task A, but then you get distracted by task B after a little while for quite a long time. Then you get back to task A and whatever, whatever. And then eventually it gets to a point where the amount of time that you spent on task A is what you wanted to do is actually quite small. So if you wanted to like try to visualize what a good attention span looks like. A good attention span is that if you spend a lot of time and you intend to work on task A, you just work on task A for the whole time. That is what a, an ideal attention span would look like. But this is how it would work if you're a robot, but you're a human and our brains don't work like that. We are always distracted by different other tasks. So let me explain how attention works in the human mind. So for something to distract you or take your attention, there needs to be a stimulus from the environment, something needs to change, and then that gets noticed by your sense organs, you know, and your eyes and your nose and, you know, touch, whatever. That is something new that happens. That signal travels to your brain, and that is where you get your attention. And then after that takes your attention, then, you know, your brain signals to your muscles and other things to do an action. And so the point at which something has taken your attention and then you do an action about it, that has distracted you from what you were going to do. And this whole circuit has a purpose because if you are in the wild and you hear a growling two meters away, you should pay attention and you should run away. And now this is where humans differ from animals, right? We all understand external triggers, right? External stimuli in the environment things that you hear or you see or you touch that take your attention away, right? Dogs do that, cats do that, any other animal does that, and humans, we do that. Now, the difference between us and animals is that we also respond to internal, internal cues. We have random spontaneous thoughts that we have no control over called intrusive thoughts that also can be an internal stimulus that can demand our attention and then we get distracted. Now these random intrusive thoughts that come into our mind, they are useful to us. They're the reason why we have been able to build so much is because we can think about things even when we're not there. So if you have a kid at home, you might be finishing up your work, but then you get a random thought, oh, I should, I should buy some dinner today because there's no food at home. That's the difference between us and animals, but that's why as humans, we can get so distracted. So the first practical thing that we can do to improve our attention and improve our attention span, but really it's about decreasing your distractibility, is what most people normally say, right? They say to change your environment, right? They say to change your environment because then you don't have as many things coming into your senses that normally distract you, right? Noise cancelling headphones stops things coming into your ears. If you go to the library, it stops the most of the things that normally catch your eye that distract you, right? Like your TV or your, or your, even your housemates, whatever. Changing your environment is obvious. And also, you know, like having tech, right? Different, different bits of tech, like noise cancelling headphones that actually make it easier to not get distracted. But that's the simple stuff. Like you can do that 
for an animal and stop it getting distracted. But we're a human and humans, the biggest issue that we have is internal, internal cues. So you can't stop those. You can't put some, some blind phones on when you have internal thoughts. They come up whether you like them or not. So when you are dealing with internal cues, intrusive thoughts, it's about addressing this part here. When something gets your attention, which it will, it's about not acting and not playing out that distraction. And that is something called behavioral inhibition. Dealing with your own almost instincts to do something and inhibiting those is how you don't get distracted. So if you get that thought that, oh, I didn't reply to that girl on Hinge, that internal stimulus, and it takes your attention away, how you stay focused and maintain your attention is to not act on it and not reply back to her. Well, not right now. So a good attention span with good behavioral inhibition looks like this, right? You're on task A, you get distracted by task B, but then you come straight back to task A, get distracted by task C for a little tiny bit, then you get back to task A, and then overall, the amount of time that you spent doing the task you wanted to do is most of the whole time that's elapsed. Because you can't stop yourself from getting the intrusive thought. And this is the intrusive thought. And so it's really, it's a matter of how quickly you can get rid of that thought and come back to what you were doing. Because the moment you start letting yourself go into that thought, getting wrapped up in it, then you start acting and then you get distracted for a much, much longer time. And so this is having good behavioral inhibition. And so there are a few things that you can do to increase your behavioral inhibition when you're trying to work. So the first thing to do is, is to write down the distractions that you get. So, you know, some of the thoughts that you get, some of these internal intrusive thoughts that you get, will be actually important things that you need to do, right? It will be like, oh, I've got to reply to this person. Oh, you know, I should get some shopping, you know, things like this. These are important internal thoughts that you get that actually are important for your life. If you just try to ignore them, then they will keep coming back and you actually might forget some things that are important. And so the best thing you can do is write it down, like have a notepad next to you or, you know, some post-it note, whatever it is, and then have that next to you whilst you're working and then write it down, write down all the important things like the tasks that you forgot about, write them down so then they're out of your head and then you know, you don't have to get anxious that they're not going to be done, you know that they're going to be done eventually just after you pay attention that the task that you wanted to do. And then the second thing that you can do to maximize your behavioral inhibition is to train outside of your work time. Behavioral inhibition is like a muscle. It's like the more you use it outside of your work, the easier it gets to stop yourself from doing the instinctive things that you wanted to do when you're actually doing your work, right? So do hard things, right? So let's say you get hungry. Let's say right now I'm hungry. If I wanted to train my behavioral inhibition, I would be like, actually, I'm going to eat half an hour, an hour from now, just to make sure that I'm separating my instincts, my internal, you know, my internal thoughts and motivations to what I actually do. Make this your life, right? Do it when, you know, if you don't want to work out, working out. If you don't want, if you want to get a takeaway, not getting a takeaway. All of these things are training your behavioral inhibition, which means that when you actually sit down to work, you can stop yourself from getting distracted. And then the third, the best, single best habit that you can do to increase your behavioral inhibition is mindfulness, right? It's been, it's, it's, it's an ancient training of focus. Effectively, what you do is you focus on your breath and that's task, task, like the intended task that you do, you sit down with no distractions. You have one task, which is listen to your breath and pay attention. And then you will always get distracted by multiple thoughts. Even in a five minute period, you'll probably get hundreds of different thoughts, but you basically train your ability to let them go and then focus back on the other thing. And so when you do that every single day, literally, if you do that for like a few weeks, every single day, you get an irreversibly like permanent change in your ability to inhibit your behavior and stop thoughts from distracting you. That is the best thing that I can recommend that you do 
to get a better attention span. So now you understand what an attention span is and how to optimize it to make progress and achieve your goals. But if you feel like sometimes you haven't got the motivation to sit down and do the work, then click this video on screen where I explain my formula for motivating yourself without discipline.